So welcome to the Maharese in uh, Castle Gregory, County Kerry. My name is Dr. Eugene Farrell. I'm with the Discipline of Geography in NUI Galloway. I just want to give you a background to this project that I'm doing uh, with a colleague, Dr. Kevin Lynch, that examines uh, beach and dune dynamics here uh, in this incredible coastal environment. The textbooks tell us and the theory tells us that during wintertime, coastal environments, especially places located in West Kerry, where we get basically, we're, the west coast of Ireland is in the path of all these Atlantic storms that originate thousands of miles away. But the way we're situated is every winter we're susceptible to a high frequency of storms. So one of the things I'm interested in is examining the response of our coastlines. How resilient are they to these storms? Following the storms of 2013-14, I quickly realized there wasn't many uh, scientists out there in Ireland, coastal scientists, that are actually taking active measurements of, of these sediment budgets. No one's like, actively measuring how much erosion occurred in any one event or over a season. In terms of seasons, what we expect in coastal dune environments is wintertime is a time of high energy, destructive waves. What happens is a lot of the sand is moved offshore. It's not eroded, it's simply moved. What does that mean? It just means that the, the beach, beaches are lowered in elevation and the sand moves into the near shore that you can't see it because it's underwater within 10 meter uh, bathymetry, for example. Also during the winter, with the lower beaches, it means the wave run up uh, can go higher up the beach and also cause scarping to the dunes. And again, this is something that's well documented. We know that beach dunes have this response during winter. Now, all else being equal, what we also expect is during summer months, we have called what we call constructive uh, times. And this is when the beach elevation actually builds up and the dune repairs itself. So you've less energy waves, which means sediment that's moved offshore during winter is slowly pushed on during the spring and summer and so the beach elevation is raised. If you have a higher beach elevation it means the, waves, the wave run up doesn't go into the dunes which means the dunes have a chance to recover. Also with a, a higher wider beach that sand with dominant onshore winds the sand, sand is blown into the dunes and again the dunes accrete and they can repair themselves through first of all you get embryonic dunes with uh, pioneer species vegetation growing low to the ground at the front of the dune face and over time we expect that dune to repair over one season. So one of the tasks we're doing right now is actually establishing the sediment budget for the Maharese uh, and that's been done through the multiple mapping uh, surveys over the last essentially 16 months at this stage and tying it in with the forces that are causing them uh, the changes which is the waves and also atmospheric conditions. So one of the things we've realized here recently is the Maharese has been undergoing, has a net sediment deficit. Now this has been known locally for years. The locals have t could have told you years ago that the, this whole system is retreating at a, an alarming rate. And so one of the things that they didn't have to back up these stories was scientific data. So one of the projects we've done uh, on top of uh, the beach dune surveys as we looked at historic maps. So we're going back to the, Cass the Cassini black and white maps from circa 1900. We have aerial photographs from 1970s. We have recently have LIDAR data and we have our surveys. So we have we've, we've maps of this dune line from 2016 all the way back to 1900. And so what we did in uh, in Geography, NUI Galway, one of our students who's doing her master's in this area, Sinead wilkes Orzoko, is we looked at uh, the, rate of, the rate of retreat. So in the last 116 years, this whole system has gone back 72 meters. Uh, and that's an average of 0.62 meters a year. And more recently, it's got, it, that the rates are increasing the last couple of years. Uh, there's a really good example on the beach here which is a drainage block that was built in 1978 and that drainage block essentially was a drain that uh, was connected to the road that, that kept flooding during the winter uh, high precipitation events. Now when that was built in 1978 it was on the fore dune. It was built, it, the exit of that drain was actually on, on the front of the dune. As you can see now that is it's at least 24 meters back from the dune, the dune line. So that's a very good example of the retreat. Now locally, the, the locals can tell, actually tell you more that, that 
there used to be a second dune even more seaward of that of that drainage block so over year over time there's a massive legacy of uh, net sediment loss now that has huge implications in terms of uh, protecting the area the locals are very concerned absolutely for many reasons uh, one of the things the community is trying to do is get support from uh, management agencies in Ireland who are, who, charge, who are charged with protecting these rural communities. Uh, a lot of these days, there's a huge disparity between the budget available for cities like Cork, like Limerick, like Galway, like Dublin, the, the urban centres, and protecting them for, obviously for clear reasons of uh, economic impacts protecting the cities versus protecting a rural community with less 250 houses a small community but equally more vulnerable than cities so the community here have organized themselves and they've created a group called the Maharese Conservation Association and they've multiple links on social media and a website that actually lists all the activities they're doing here in terms of trying to monitor trying to protect the area it's a catch-22 for MPWS, the National Parks and Wildlife and Service. They're always in the crosshairs for many reasons because their they're, they're, they're remit is to protect these areas. This area is a unique area. It's a unique habitat. So under EU law, the birds, the birds Directive, the Habitats Directive, it's an SAC, it's a Special Area of Conservation, which means it's very, very difficult to, to uh, implement interventions like protection uh, structures and things like this. Well, the catch-22 here is if they don't do anything soon, there will be nothing left to protect. The locals have been saying this for years. There's a legacy of, of erosion here, a legacy of mismanagement here, and all this needs to change, and it's changing now. Uh, the part I'm really delighted to contribute with my colleagues and my students is that finally they can have a scientific report to go with their when they knock on the door of Kerry County Council, when they knock on the door of OPW, they actually can back it up with the science. Uh, so I'm delighted that I can, you know, these are the results I wasn't expecting. I was expecting storm response and recovery, but there's no recovery. It's storm response, it's erosion, and there's very limited recovery here at the moment. So my job, I guess, as a scientist is hand them over the documentation. Now I would like to say They've had a, a couple of public meetings and they've actually invited me down here. It's been a remarkable attendance and remarkable discussions. And they're very fortunate where they, they've presented their case very well and they've many advocates. Mr. Eamon Scanlon inside Kerry County Council uh, spoke here recently and Eamon has been involved in coastlines in Kerry for well over 25 years. Although he moved laterally and upwards in Kerry County Council, Eamon still has a vested interest in... He understands the locals' concerns and he understands their problems and he's trying his best and he's a phenomenal advocate for this area in Kerry County Council. But it can't stop there. They've also, as again, I can only provide the science, but the community have mobilised and they've done many activities. You'll see at the entrance here, you'll see activities like signage, like straw bales, like uh, uh, marm glass planting and, and fencing. Cumulatively, all these are the little things towards a long-term management plan. It's because of these activities that they've also have now have advocates in the National Parks, Wildlife and Service. So the MPWS are definitely open to, some, to, open to this community and they're listening to them. And I'm hoping over the next couple of years that they'll find a solution to the massive erosion. Now, so the whole challenge here is trying to what's design the most appropriate solution. In coastal science, we talk about a spectrum from anything from a resistance approach to an adaptation approach. Conventionally, we also call this the hard engineering solutions versus soft engineering. Examples of hard engineering uh, strategies in coastal science include sea walls, breakwaters, groins, uh, revetment, and there's a good example uh, built in the 1980s towards the north of the Tombolo that's protecting the road and some houses and a restaurant down there. Uh, a good example of rock revetment that actually has been successful. Now there's also soft engineering solutions and that's more towards things like fencing, towards the bales, towards the, the planting. Now I guess the whole, the whole 
challenge we have as scientists is actually trying to design what's the best solution for any one area. Unfortunately, no hat fits all. So right now in the Maharis, we're at the stage where we're trying to come up with a solution that keeps everyone happy because you've multiple stakeholders, you've multiple management agencies and all their needs need to be resolved into a solution that long term this area is not only stabilized but long term it's sustainable and then on top of that we need to start providing more facilities down here to the people who are using the area. So th at the moment it's all in term, short term management strategies and these are all being driven by the locals. It's all their time, their man hours, their money, their fundraising events locally that are driving all the local initiatives. These include signage and you'll see all this in many places along the Maharis here. Signage, fencing, straw bales, planting, steps down to the beach. All this is done driven solely by the locals who are vested in protecting this area. Their whole remit as local as a local community as an active Maharis Conservation Association is to have a voice and to work with Kerry County Council and the OPW to come up with a long-term solution and now the challenge is having a long-term solution that keeps everyone happy. I would say and this goes not only historically my own many years growing up in this area in many summers but because this area switched towards more of a, a recreation economy one of the thing and the recreation economy is based on the beach and dune system which acts basically then as pressures on these systems we need to provide adequate facilities uh, to, to visitors this includes access roads that are managed where do they access how do they access parking includes providing simple amenities for them so uh, camping areas toilets so essentially it maintains the health of the dune system and the beach